Before I start this video, I just wanted to mention that a new version of my website, SeanBeaton.com, is now live. You can go play any of the games that I've created on my YouTube channel, and you can create an account and keep track of your high score, so go check it out. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create Flappy Bird with only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's pretty fun to play and not that hard to code. You can change some of the values to make it your own, so follow along and let's begin. Start, I'll make a new folder and call it Flappy Bird, and then I'm going to open it with brackets. Brackets is a text editor that makes it easy to render your website to see what the final product is going to look like. So now that we're in our folder, we're going to create three new files. The first one will be index.html, second is style.css, and script.js. In the index.html file, we're just going to start by creating a basic HTML layout, a head and a body, then we'll make the title Flappy Bird. Next, I'll create a link tag and connect the CSS file, and then I'll create a script tag and connect the script file. Now that we're ready, we'll start by creating a game div. This is going to contain all of the elements of our game. Next, inside of that, we're going to create three more divs. Each div is going to have an ID. The first ID is block, second ID is whole, and the third ID is character. So now we're done creating all of our HTML elements and we can move on to the CSS. So we'll hop over to our CSS file and we'll start by just removing the basic padding and margins that are automatically added by the browser. And then next we'll start by giving the game div some stylings, a width and a height, and a border so that we can see the outline of it. We will also add margin auto so that it's centered in the browser. Next we'll start styling the block div. We'll add a width and a height and we'll make the background color black. We want to move it to the right because in Flappy Bird the tubes come from the right. To do that we'll have to add the property left 400 pixels because the game is 400 pixels wide so we move it to the left 400. And that left property won't work unless the div has a relative position. Now we'll create a keyframe animation that starts with the block on the right and ends with the block on the left. It's pretty simple just at the beginning so 0% it's at 400 pixels. And then I have 100% so at the end of the animation it's at negative 50 and that's because it has a width of 50 so we want it to go all the way across. And then we'll add that animation to our block by adding the property animation block one second. That's what the one S is in some of my old videos. People think it's an IS. It is a one S. Actually going to change that to two seconds in like a minute. <laughs> we'll also add infinite so that the animation just keeps replaying over and over and over again. You'll notice that our block does go outside of the game div, which is not what we want. So we'll just go to our game div on our CSS styles and we'll add overflow hidden. That just makes everything that's outside of the game div hidden. So now we can start adding some properties to our whole div. We're going to give it mostly the same properties as the block, except for its background color is going to be white and it's going to only have a height of 150 pixels. Because the block and the whole div are both position relative, that means they come one after another in the HTML. So the whole doesn't actually start until below the block, which is the entire height of the game. So it's outside of the game. So we need to add the property top negative 500 because the height of the block is 500. So we're just pulling it down 500 so that it, they are on top of each other. I made it red so you can see what's going on there. So we're not quite done with the styling yet, but we're going to move on to the JavaScript and we'll come back to it later. So we're going to start by changing the position of whole after every animation. Before we do that, we're just going to create some variables called whole and block and then set them to our whole and block elements. Then we'll create an event listener on the whole element and then use the animation iteration and then run a function. So this function is going to run every single time the animation runs. So after every single animation, it'll come back to this code and run it, and then do the next animation, come back to this code and run it. And so what we're going to do with that code is change the top position of our hole so they randomly come at different heights. So the first thing we're going to do is create a random variable and set it to math.random. What that does is returns a random decimal between 0 and 1. Then we're going to multiply it by 300 so that it returns a random number between 0 and 300. Then we're going to add 150 to it so that it returns a number between 150 or 450. And then we're also going to make it negative so that it returns a number between negative 150 or negative 450. So if you remember in our CSS, we made the whole top negative 500. 
And so now what this code's doing is setting that whole top to be in between negative 150 or negative 450. So it's somewhere in the middle. So now you can see when we run the game, every single hole has a random different position. So now we'll go back to our CSS and start styling the character div. We're just gonna give it a width and a height and we'll give it a background color of red. We're gonna give it a position of absolute and we're gonna set the top to 100 pixels. We're also gonna add a border radius so that it is a circle because I think it looks better as a circle. <laughs> so now we have our character but we need to add some gravity because what happens in Flappy Bird if you do nothing, it just falls and then when you click it kind of jumps. But so by default, it just falls. So we're gonna create a function that kind of simulates gravity. So to do that, we'll start by creating an interval function that runs every 10 milliseconds. We'll create a new variable called character top that is equal to the current top position of the character div. We can get that information by using window.getComputedStyles and then inside of the brackets, what we're trying to get the computed styles of. So our character, so we put character and then get property value and then inside of the brackets we'll put the string top because that's the value we want we want the top value and so now our variable character top will be equal to the top position of the character div every single time that function runs every 10 milliseconds it's going to keep updating and, and returning the top position of that character div which it's just going to be 100 every single time because that's what we set it to but in the next line we're going to set a new character top and so we're going to make it what the character top was, but we're gonna add three to it. So it's gonna push it down three pixels from where it was already and then put it down three. And then the next time it runs, the character top's gonna be different because we added three pixels to it and then it'll add three to it again. So it's basically just gonna keep adding three pixels. So every time this function runs, it moves the ball down. So now we have our gravity function working. We wanna create a jump function. To do that, we're gonna create a regular function and call it jump. Then we're going to hop back over to our HTML and go up to the HTML tag and add an on click and run the jump function so that when you click on literally anything on the page, it'll run our function. And so before we start creating our jumping function, we want to create a variable called jumping and set it to zero. And then in our jumping function, set it to be one. And then once the jumping function is over, we'll set it back to zero. We won't do it yet because I want to do it at the end. but that's what we're gonna do. And so the jumping variable will always equal zero unless the jumping function is currently running. Now we'll add an if statement so that the gravity function only changes the top if we're not currently jumping or else we would be moving the ball up and down at the same time and that just gets messy. So now inside of the jump function, we're gonna create an interval that runs every 10 milliseconds and we'll also create a new variable called jump count. The jump count variable is just going to be a counter that keeps track of how many times this interval is ran because we don't want to keep jumping forever, we just want to jump a little bit and then go back to gravity pulling us down. So each time the interval runs we're going to add one to the counter. And so our jump function is very similar to the gravity function so we can just copy and paste those two lines except instead of adding three pixels we're going to take away and I think we're going to actually take away five pixels because you jump a little bit faster than gravity pulls you down. I mean, these are just variables that I picked. Totally up to you to pick different numbers. I mean, see what you get. So next we're gonna create an if statement. And so if the jump count is above 20, meaning that our interval has ran 20 times, then we're gonna stop jumping. We're gonna end it. So we're gonna clear interval for our jump interval. That's why we set our interval equal to a variable so that we can stop it or else we just can't stop it. <laughs> And then so here, this is the end of our function. So we're gonna set jumping back to zero so that gravity will start again. Next, I'm gonna add an if statement just so that we don't keep making the ball go up if it's gonna be above the top of the game. We don't want our bird to just be able to go above all of our blocks. So we're gonna add an if statement. If the top is less than six, then, then don't keep adding to the top. And I thought I'd also make it stop jumping after the 15th interval so there's just five intervals where nothing happens. It's not jumping, it's not going down either. And I find it makes it just a little bit easier to play. <laughs> and so that's it. Now our character should be able to jump up and down. All we have to set up is some hit detection so we know when the game's over and that's pretty much it. So we can do that by just going to our gravity function and creating an if statement. And if the character top is below the bottom, meaning it hit the bottom, then that means the game's over. We will alert game over. We also want to reset the top position to be 100 pixels for the character or else it's just going to stay at the bottom when you reload. 
We can also create a counter variable and then increment the counter for every single animation iteration and then we can present your score at the end. Also just don't forget to reset the counter after every time you lose or else their score is just going to keep adding up every single time they play. So you want to reset it to zero. <laughs> so now we just need to set up the hit detection for the blocks. A good way to think about it is the game is over if you hit a block unless you're also hitting a hole. So if you hit a block, you hit a black part, then it's just over. But if you hit the block and the hole is there, then you're good. So we need to do some crazy if statements with some ors and ands. It's a little confusing. So what I'm going to do is just create the brackets first so you can like see the layout of everything and then add the statements or else it's a little confusing. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Before I create the brackets though, I actually need to create some variables so we have all the information that we need. We're going to create some more variables like character top except for they're just going to get different values from different elements. So we're going to need a block left and a whole top. Those variables are equal to exactly what you think they are. Block left is the left position of the block and hole top is the top position of the hole. Pretty straightforward. Now you do have to remember that the hole has a negative top position, which kind of messes everything up. So we need to create another new variable called C top and make it equal to the inverse of our character top from like 500 minus character top. And then it's also negative. Yeah, I guess negative from negative 500. I don't know. Anyways, so, but so this is what you do. <laughs> All right, and so it's a little confusing. So I'm going to add just the brackets first and then we'll add the statements. So we have our original if statement with our uh, if the character top is below the bottom. So we're going to keep that there and then we're going to go if that is true or brackets and brackets and brackets. So we have three different statements. So if all three of these statements that we haven't written yet are true, then the game's also over. So we're going to go back to our first brackets and if the block left is less than 20 and the block left is greater than negative 50, so that means that the block is touching the ball in any way, shape, or form, a little bit on the left or a little bit on the right or completely in the middle. We're going to add more brackets or other brackets. Then inside of that, in our third and final if statement, guess it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but I'm going to do the last one. So if those two are true and one of the final ones are true, then the game's over. In the first one, we're going to put if C top is less than whole top or in the next brackets, if C top is greater than whole top plus 130. It's 130 because the whole height is 150 pixels, but it's really 150 pixels minus the height of the character because the character takes up 20 pixels so the hole's really only 130 pixels but so now if you run into a block the game will end but if you go through a hole then the game continues that's it now you should have a fully functioning flappy bird game i mean this is just the beginning there's no design and you can change any of the values so go ahead Take my code, change some of the values, create your own game, maybe make the blocks super wide so you have to like jump for a long time in between them. I don't know. Make your own game, add some designs to it, maybe make the make the blocks actually look like tubes. I don't know. But so there you go. Hopefully you guys learned something new. And hopefully this tutorial was pretty straightforward because it did get a little complicated at the end, but I think that's how it had to be. <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.